In previous videos, we talked about the philosophy of ancient Israel and ancient Greece, and how these two pillars of Western thought were built on for generations to provide people with a strong sense of belonging and participation with the world around them. We then looked at how this idea of fitting in with reality began to be undermined around the 14th century. How Copernicus and his development of the heliocentric model of the solar system caused many people to feel their natural sense of reality could no longer be trusted. And finally, we discussed how Galileo's discovery of inertial motion caused them to feel adrift in a meaningless universe that is no longer acting on purpose, but acts simply because things smash into each other mindlessly. There is a man who is deeply impressed by the anxiety of his time, and he wants to try and solve it. He wants to take this grammar of the scientific revolution and this new emerging math and use them to come up with a solution to the emerging meaning crisis. This man was René Descartes. Descartes invents this powerful new psychotechnology of graphing. Graphing allows you to convert any shape or relation between variables into an equation, and it was a monumental leap in the scientific world. Look at the enormous power an equation like this puts at our fingertips. Galileo believed math is what allows the mind to reconnect to the world. And he appears to be right, because the equations seem to cut through illusion in a very powerful way. Descartes felt there was a lack of certainty that was driving the anxiety of his time. And he feels the way to solve this is to transform our minds into machines of certainty. His solution is to get us to think completely in equations and to manipulate our thought in a purely logical fashion. Essentially what he wants to do is make everyone's mind function as closely to a computer as possible. If math is the only thing that connects us to reality, then if we make our minds think exactly like computers, we can regain certainty. And according to Descartes, this is what will alleviate our anxiety and suffering. If we follow Martin Luther, we have this radical self-doubt, which can only be overcome through blind faith and acceptance of God's will. And if we follow Descartes, we can't believe anything unless it is certain. If you remove people's agency in how they come to their beliefs, then you radically undermine any meaning in life they might possess. And as for our pursuit of absolute certainty, what we eventually realize is that science doesn't and can't provide certainty. We can't seek certainty as a solution to the loss of connection we are experiencing, because uncertainty is a fact of life. In England, Thomas Hobbes proposes an idea that he thinks is directly implied by Descartes. He says that if thinking is just computation, then we should be able to build computational machines capable of cognition. What Hobbes is really saying is there is nothing immaterial about us, like a soul. He's saying our brain is just a meat computer, and when it dies, we are completely gone. Nothing about us remains. This was not Descartes' intention and he formulates good answers to Hobbes, but they are going to make things worse, not better. Descartes feels the scientific revolution has shown us that there is no meaning in matter. Meaning exists solely in the mind, therefore the mind must be an immaterial thing. Your body is made from matter, and the mind is not. Descartes is saying the mind and body do not share any properties. A body has weight, energy, and force and a mind has none of those. If there are no shared properties between these two, then something like damaging my physical body, which causes pain in my mind, is an illusion. Something physical happens to my body and I get a mental experience called pain, but that's impossible. There's no way to move matter around that will get me mind. Descartes also feels there is no way to move my mind that gets me matter. I say I want this cookie, and that immaterial want moves my physical body. This is a mystery, because there is no way mind can move matter and vice versa. Descartes is saying the mind and body are radically disconnected from each other. What makes this worse is the fact that I have never seen another mind. I see someone's body, and I think that by paying attention to their body, I can understand their mind. But Descartes says that is false. There is no mind-body connection. I have no reason to believe that any of you have minds. Our knee-jerk reaction is to say we know that our mind can cause us to move the physical world, and something happening to my physical body affects our mind. Each of us is sure of this, but for thousands of years we were certain the sun revolved around the earth, and that was an illusion. This is Descartes' dilemma. If our mind is disconnected from our body, 
and our mind is disconnected from other minds, how do I know every part of my experience is not an illusion? The math connects us to reality, but maybe the math is just part of this dream that I am living. Descartes discovers that he can doubt just about everything, except for the fact that he has the capacity to doubt. Cogito ergo sum. All I know for certain is I think, therefore I am. All that is left of these great structures of reality is this small, self-obsessed blip of self-consciousness. All these factors we've been building up to in previous videos are converging and reinforcing each other. We have a narcissistic, self-loathing sense of self thanks to Luther. We have no capacity for spiritual transformation or self-transcendence. We have no wisdom institutions, and we have a complete collapse in Descartes towards an atom of self-consciousness, without any tradition or institutions capable of helping it. And that's the meaning crisis. This brings us right back to video one of this series, and how we presented the case that the primary cultural mythology we are creating in order to explain the meaning crisis is the zombie apocalypse. If you've stuck around since that video, think about all the disconnections the zombie experiences. The spoken word. The ability to think, strive, and yearn is what makes us human. The lack of an interior reality means that the zombie cannot connect to the world. It cannot affirm its own realness and it cannot affirm the realness of its environment. Zombies drift. There is nothing whatsoever about a zombie that appears to belong to this world. The fact that the brain is driving the consumption of brain is a deeply complex symbolic occurrence. Culture is devouring culture. Mind is devouring mind. Humanness is devouring humanness. They are surrounded by each other, but somehow remain in total isolation, lacking the ability to reach out to one another. The zombie represents a crisis of intimacy. Every person is a zombie in waiting. Its contact with the world spreads its condition like a plague. Our modern world discourages contact in all its forms, and treating everyone like a stranger is the only way to avoid infection. We are surrounded and yet stranded, inundated, while utterly alone. The fact that these disconnections mirror our own has pushed some to view them as a cultural representation of our loss of meaning. In our next video, we will discuss ways of addressing these issues when we move on to the philosophy of ancient India.